you can see there's two large spaces like this in the building, multi-purpose room and gym. And they have uh, these timber trusses that support the roof. And the timber trusses bear on steel columns that were embedded in the concrete block walls. And a lot of the really visible damage from the earthquake um, was where those different systems were moving, trying to move in different directions and uh, breaking apart. The structure that you're looking at all around you in this room primarily is all actual concrete blocks. So it's eight inches plus thick, grouted solid with concrete. But as we walk throughout the rest of the school, you'll see pretty much everything looks a lot like this, but about 50% of it, especially the exterior walls, is a veneer. So that's a very thin, concrete block over a wood wall. Okay. The block today, where it's an actual eight inch block, uh, where that's highly stressed, we're going to be putting a veneer, uh, a, a facing over the top of that, a shotcrete, what they call fiber reinforced yep. cementious matrix, over the top of that CMU to better bind it all together. If you look up at this wall over here, you can see a lot of chips and broken pieces that came out of this wall during the earthquake. Nothing catastrophic happened here, but a lot of little bits fell off the wall. And so that's one of the things that we want to try to prevent in the future, plus it helps us fix some other issues. Where it's a thin CMU veneer over the top of a wood wall, we're actually going to be removing most of that because that actually just makes the building heavier and it performs worse in a big earthquake. And so as we can remove some of that weight, that veneer weight, we can replace it with nice insulated metal panels that are lighter, more energy efficient, and more attractive. Um, so it kind of helps the building in three different ways. Yeah, and then the other kind of key point is that our, our design project has sort of three layers to it. Uh, the first layer is the repair of the things that were damaged in the earthquake. So we, we're tracking all that information as it's sort of separate scope items because there's a potential, a good potential for the FEMA federal agency to reimburse the school district for that work. Um, we're also tracking something called mitigation items, which are things that we identify as a design team that they weren't necessarily damaged in the earthquake, but they have a potential to cause to be future problems in a future event. And by fixing them now, we mitigate that risk. So those are mitigation. That's a chunk of it. And then there's a pretty significant part of the project that's let's uh, take the opportunity to fix a lot of things that the school has needed fixed for quite some time. So there's we're calling that the improvements. So there's this three-tier structure to what we're doing. And some of them overlap, and some of the repairs actually get um, fixed by replacement under the improvements. If it, if it is a repair that is specific to damage that was caused by the earthquake, then, then by, by category that is eligible for federal and state reimbursement. Anything that's a mitigation or an improvement to the facility is not. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Uh, that area in there, I think when I was there on top of that drum was a, uh, was a, uh, something that was a brace, like, like you see on these pipes here. A lot of those pulled out of the ceiling. So we actually had a lot of pipes came down and broke open. There was a lot of glycol and other things lost there. There was a large, uh, that big box thing that you see in there is a heat exchanger. That developed leaks and was leaking uh, pretty profusely uh, after the, uh, uh, the earthquake. Uh, the main thing, one of the things I had just said was that the gas connections from the boilers had come undone. And that was something that uh, could have been pretty catastrophic, but we had, uh, in the last few years, had actually installed seismic shutoffs on our gas uh, regulators out here. So those shut off and we didn't have any issues. So that was a real positive thing. All right, so this, like Tom was saying, this is the life skills room where it was uh, constructed the summer before the earthquake hit. And just like when we do any other project, we always have to bring everything up to code, including the drop ceiling. No repairs were done in here whatsoever, so the drop ceiling has all the seismic bracing that's in place. Uh, there's a shear wall, two shear walls in here. They weren't lined up properly, we went ahead and corrected that. And what the shear wall does in the case of a seismic event, it displaces and you know, corrects that horizontal movement compared to a regular wall that just out of the vertical road. 
said it was a major renovation. I said everybody was so happy to get this room. But I said I just want to point out like very minimal damage as far as sheet rock cracks. So this is a kind of like a shining example of what we can do when we bring it back up the code. And this is what we're looking for when we continue to move forward with the building. Um, most every building that you guys live in or work in or go visit is what's called life safety engineering. Okay, and that means that in the worst earthquake, we expect everyone to get out of that building alive. Okay, that is our goal in the worst design earthquake. Okay, um, for assembly facilities or important facilities like schools, we enhance that a little bit to what we call damage control. Damage control means that. Um, we expect everyone still to get out safely, but we also expect uh, the building not to be completely trashed after that earthquake. Staying going around, but you know, you go they're on. they're designed to current code, they're engineered to current code, and they're inspected to current code. Perfect. Those are three important Perfect. legs of that stool, and without one of those legs, you can have real problems. And that's a lot of what you're discussing about Eagle River is that inspection piece is non-existent. That review piece is kind of sometimes there, sometimes not. Right. ASD facilities don't have to hamper with any of that. All the inspections that are on ASD facilities are done fully to code. Yeah. So the, um, the state of Alaska actually governs all building construction uh, in the state. Uh -huh. The state fire marshal does that. And they and the municipality bankers actually adopt the same codes. Okay. okay, so no matter where you are in Alaska, you're subject to those codes. The enhancement that the municipality does on that is they review it mm -hmm. to ensure that engineers and architects are doing what they're supposed to do and getting to that minimum code standard. Okay. And then they inspect that as it's going up and being built to make sure the contractor is doing what the engineer and architect told them to do and what the municipality needs them to do minimally, right? Okay. Uh, outside the four, no, six, six cities in Alaska that actually do review and inspection, mm -hmm. there's very little review and inspection that occurs inside the state. So it's not a code problem, it's a review it's, and inspection okay. problem. That's good. That's good information <laughs> for that subject. Now, it, it is a yeah. subject. Okay. Okay. So this is probably the most heavily damaged element, single element inside green. Uh, this wall is the back wall of the gym. Uh, and wow. so the shore poles here, the metal shore poles are ensuring that this wall doesn't move any more than it did after the earthquake. So there's a contractor in here after we red tagged the building uh, doing minor repairs and stabilization. This is one of the primary stabilization things he did to make sure that we didn't uh, lose the support of this wall. If you look up above the ductwork, you can see a large area that is unpainted and there's a broken piece of block up there. That's where this wall touches the underside of the roof framing. That connection broke free over about a 40 foot section here. Uh, where this wall is no longer connected to the roof or that, that connection is very compromised. Um, so as soon as we saw this, the contractor got in here immediately, got the shore poles on the wall to make sure this didn't fall down in a subsequent aftershock. And one of the primary repairs we're going to do is here. And then we're going to do this same uh, repair on the other concrete wall, other CMU walls in the building as a mitigation because while this one broke, this same detail exists at a lot of other locations in this building. And so we're going to go through and systematically repair and mitigate this detail everywhere in the building so it will no longer be an issue. After the shore poles were put up, the question was asked, do we know that this wall is still strong enough to carry its shear and gravity load? Uh, and so what we had the contractor do was drill all of those holes in the bottom to verify that there's grout inside those cells and there's the rebar inside the cells where we expect it to be. And this wall passed with flying colors. Every piece of rebar that's supposed to be there is there. Every cell that's supposed to be have grout inside of it has it. So the, uh, you'll, there'll be a large steel connection bracket on both sides of the wall once we're done. 
If I could just also, you know, one, one, of the, one of the elements of the proposal is, is to address what is a very dark school. I think this hallway really does kind of, kind of capture that. So, so if you see all the ducting and the conduit, it's all of color, it's all black colors. Also, you see the lighting, this is all aged lighting. So what, what we are proposing as a part of this project, really that third pair of improvements, is to brighten the school up. And you'll see as we go further down the hallway, you know, that, that this is a very dark school, that natural light and additional LED lighting and then brighter paint, white paint. I mean, you kind of, you kind of envision what it will look like. It will be so much more appealing to kids and so a couple uh, a couple things of note in the gym area. Um, if you look over the railing, you can see some cones around the floor. Those are the exploratory holes that we had drilled by the geotechnical company to check the, the earth underneath the gym and make sure there wasn't uh, pockets. There was some there was some surveying done right after the earthquake that indicated that the floor slope had changed and. Um, but later it seemed level again, and so it kind of raised the alarms, you know, is there something happening underground we can't see? And the floor of slab is rebounded with the earth is um, sunken. And that wasn't, that wasn't found to be the case with those holes. Um, well, there, there are some, you know, some drywall cracking in here, some things to repair, some panels that fell from the ceiling. Some of these acoustic panels broke loose. So part of the scope will be in the process of relighting, repainting, we'll be taking down all the acoustic panels, um, probably recovering them, and then reinstalling them with a better attachment system. What we do have is we have a roof that's had that's had moisture issues for quite a long time, mm -hmm. unrelated to the earthquake, okay. and is overdue for replacement. So the plan is to take all the roofing off down to the structural deck, at that time, which is a plywood deck, at that time, uh, assess the condition of the plywood deck because it may be that it needs more nailing or it may be that um, it just got rotten from so much water saturation in the roof okay. and then replace the damaged structural deck and re-roof uh, with to a dis ASD standard. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right now our, our cost estimate to do to do the three tiers that were discussed is 39.3 million. Of that 39.3, our current assessment is about 10.7 million is specific repairs to earthquake damage. So that money we think is eligible, that amount is eligible for federal and state repair. The feds would pay up to 75% and then the state would match 25%. But the, the, the bond proposal that, that is going forward is 82.8 80, 80, million, but it's over two years. Uh, so um, 80, about 40, 41 million a year. Within, within that 82.8 million, we estimate about 40 to 42 million of it is in fact earthquake specific repairs. So overall, our, our current estimate is about 65 million across the district. So the, the bond doesn't cover every school that was damaged. And, and what a, a potential scenario could be, uh, a portion of that federal reimbursement would go towards fixing the other earthquake damage uh, in the district. That way, we're not coming to the public, uh, seeking public money to fix damages when that federal money really would go towards the same thing. So that's a scenario. 